Welcome to Live in the D in the green room, everybody. It is Friday. We had such a jam-packed and fun show. First person who I want to talk about is Miss Robbie Montgomery. You guys might remember her from Welcome to Sweetie Pies, and she's just got so much energy. She was uh, an original iCat. That's right. Did you see those pictures? She was smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, said she had a really good time in that part of her life, then decided to get into the food business and is now back on the stage. But she's also reinventing herself over and over again. And, you know, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, she's gone from the stage to the TV screen and is now back on the stage sharing her talents once again to a brand new audience with a new single. Ms. Robbie Montgomery is here to tell us how she is reinventing herself and serving as an inspiration to all of us. Ms. Robbie, I'm so delighted to be speaking with you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Good. Well, many know you from your show, Welcome to Sweetie Pies, but your career yeah. in entertainment started with being one of the original Ikeettes in the Ike and Tina yeah. Turner Review in the 1960s. Tell us what that was like and how that shaped who you've become. Well, actually, it was really exciting. I mean, back in the 60s, we were a doo-wop group singing on the, on the front porch and under the street light. And I gave us the opportunity to background the first song, Fool in Love. And that became a hit. So he gave us the opportunity to go on the road with him as I get. And so I took the opportunity, went on the road, and it's been uh, singing ever since. I mean, other than my cooking, Welcome to Sweetie Pies, which was uh, my second love. I always say singing is my first and chicken is my second. All right. Well, now you have a new single out and you're reinventing yourself again in your yes. 80s. So what motivates you and keeps you going? Well, you know, after you do one thing so long, it's like, what's next? So uh, it inspires me to keep thinking of things that I'm going to do next. I mean, now I'm trying to be the oldest person to get a Grammy. Oh. So I was like, well, I've been at the Grammys. I've sang behind all these other artists and things. So now it's time for me to get a Grammy. So that's my goal now, to get a Grammy. And after that, I'll find something else to reinvent myself. I mean, it's just keep on living and enjoying life. So keep coming up with all these things to do. I love it, Miss Robbie. I love it. So tell us what we can expect from the new single. Well, the new singer is a crossover uh, Southern Soul. I've been in Mississippi, and that seems to be the thing down there that everybody's listening to Southern Soul. So this guy, Or Cunningham, who's a Southern Soul singer, wrote this song for me, thinking about cheating. It's this lady that her, husband, her man has been doing all kinds of things to her, and now she's thinking about cheating. So I thought it was a great song, and I took the opportunity to go out and do it, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that's a, a universal theme. That that kind of theme for a song will never get old, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people think about it, but very few say it. Right. So exactly. I'm saying it. There yeah. you go. You're saying it for all the all the people who can't or who don't have the courage to. So finally, let me ask you this, Miss Robbie. What words of wisdom do you have for all of us on our own journey of reinvention and keeping life fresh? Well, I think whatever your goals are in life, I mean, they change often. Just go for it. It doesn't really matter if you fail at it. It's not a word, uh, not a thing is failing. But if it doesn't work at that time, maybe it's not the time for it. But think of what you would like to do in your life. Now, at my age of 81, I'm doing what I want to do. So, I mean, tomorrow, today is singing. Tomorrow, it might be something else. But go for your goals, whatever it is. Nobody can achieve them for you but you. That's so right. you have to go for it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. Just keep trying. Just keep on trying. Miss Robbie, you're such an inspiration. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. It is our pleasure. You're Don't forget that you. song, Thinking About Cheating. That's go out right. and get it. That's right. Take Thank me to you. the Grammys. And to the Grammys. I got it. We yes, wish you the best yes. of luck on that, Miss Robbie. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, next up we go to Dine in the D at Sozai in Clawson, and boy, oh boy, did I have fun during this segment. It was a lot of fun, and the food was delicious. Chef's delicious. kiss? Chef's kiss, exactly. <laughs>
Do you ever walk into a restaurant and wonder, what should I order? Perhaps the cuisine is new to you and you don't know where to start. Yeah, well, those kinds of questions are just what this next chef wants to answer. And it's all a part of his traditional Japanese service style. All right, Michelle Oliver is taking us to Clawson to dine in the D at Sozai Sushi. When I say sushi, you may think of California or spicy tuna rolls, but here at Sozai Sushi in Clawson, they do things a bit differently. Yes, they have tuna and salmon, but they offer a lot more. We have big eye tuna, we have avocado tuna, we have skipjack tuna, even avocado tuna, two different kinds. Not just do you have tuna, but what kind of tuna, what kind of cut of the tuna. Sozai means to create food. Hajime Sato first learned how to cook from his grandma. I was with my grandma all the time because my parents are working all the time. So that's kind of like how I started as a assistant to my grandma, which she would cook everything from the scratch. I want to make people happy like my grandma made me happy. And part of how he makes you happy is by taking the guesswork out of ordering with a style of service called omakase. So omakase literally means to depend on you. So literally you come in and say, okay, I'm here. Then I'm gonna start asking questions. What do you like, what do you don't like? Then I'm gonna custom make a little bit here and there to accommodate what you like. This restaurant's all about conversation. And you can feel good about your choices too because he likes to use sustainable seafood. It gets really complicated. Generally speaking, let's not eat some species that's endangered. Farming, most of the time, unfortunately, it's not really good, but there are some good ones. So choose the good ones. So what does a meal like this actually look like? Well, I'll show you. I'm trying the omakase style, and I'm specifically getting the hama, which is the most approachable or like the beginner version of this style of eating. This one starts with a miso soup. Now, this is a little bit different. It's more of a stew, has lots of vegetables in it. It also has tofu, very savory, and a great way to start off the meal. After that, the dishes that come out are kind of based on your taste. So this one is a very seasonal dish. It's scallops over blanched asparagus, and it has a kimizu sauce on top of it, which is made with egg yolk, a little bit of vinegar, and miso. Next, we're taking a trip to Hawaii with their poke bowl. So this has red tuna on it, a blend of seaweed that's been marinated. It has sesame seeds, macadamia nuts, onions, and a garlic ponzu sauce. Then we have nigiri. Now this is sushi at its simplest. It's just fish with rice. So here we have a tuna one, a salmon, and a scallop. Now for the form of sushi most people are familiar with, maki, or rolls. Now this is kind of a take on an eel roll, but to make it more sustainable, he's using marinated cooked catfish instead. Now this also has avocado, cucumbers, sesame seeds, and kampio, or a sweet tasting vegetable inside. Next we have halibut cheek. Now this one is fried, giving it a nice crispy texture. It's served over squash and it comes with blanched chrysanthemum leaves on the side. And finally, it finishes with dessert. This is their Japanese style cheesecake served with an anglaise infused with tea. That sounds amazing. You booking a place there? A it, spot there? Yes, this looks amazing. It sounds amazing. So what did you bring in for us? All right, so for each of you, you have, Jason has the miso soup, which is supposed to be a little bit thicker and more stew-like than traditional miso soup. It's definitely thicker, it. yeah. And then you have the poke. Now this poke has mm. ono in it, which is a fish from Hawaii. I had it in Hawaii, absolutely loved it. This is so amazing. The name literally means delicious. All right, well, so you know Ono is oh my goodness, oh yes. <laughs> and then over here, I'll have, well, Tati, eat. just look at her face, like the eyes closed, the head tilt, good. Mm. Transport, oh my gosh. Oh wow. This is fabulous. This is... And the little bit of macadamia nut, nuts on top give it a nice crunch. What do you think? It was green. You were suspicious. <laughs> I'm calling you out. It's, it's excellent, it's it delicious. It's, it's chilled cold, by the way. Herb, delicious. It's not hot. Right. No, yeah, it's cold. So, and those, just as a little side note here, the bowls they're eating out of, he made these bowls. This was his like pandemic project. Mm. He just started making 
bowls so like this. So including his bowls that we're eating out of. Yeah, the bowls that you're eating out of are the ones he made. And then I also asked him to bring the cheesecake. Now this cheesecake, I admit, when I bring things home, normally me and my fiance split them. Mm -hmm. This one accidentally disappeared before he got there. I don't know what happened to it. Thing, I don't I, blame you. <laughs> I did. So it's a Japanese style cheesecake, so it's a little lighter, a little fluffier. It kind of jiggles. Mm -hmm. And so it's right. not I'm using dense. a clean fork. Yes. I will you not double some, dip like George Costanza. Get a little bit of those crunchy stuffs. Okay. Yes, and it has the tea anglaise on it too. All right. Hey. You like it? It's good. Right? Okay, I'm like. Now this is coming from someone who doesn't always love cheesecake, but you like this. Wow, that is a pleasant surprise. Right? Like I said, I'm like, it's not like a normal cheesecake. It's not as tangy, like you said you didn't like. This is change in perceptions, change in perceptions. Well, now you also mentioned that there are different levels of wow. the style of dining. What are some of those? Okay, so the style of dining I showed you in the piece is Hama. That's the most introductory style uh, of dining there, but then it kind of goes up. So the next level is like, oh, want to try sea urchin? Want to try a little bit more unique stuff? Mm. So that's that level. Then there is the, it just keeps building from there. You have add more courses, you get more fancy food. Right. So you can kind of choose what style. They also have a vegan version as well for those who want to do this a is vegan wonderful. version. This is wonderful. Now we're just about out of time. Uh, but you did say that they have sustainable seafood. Yes. Okay. So they have sustainable seafood. That all depends on it. Just look at their menu or ask him. He will give you a nice explanation for what that means for him. And it's nice to have someone there who can walk you through the process. I yes. would just go in and just order this. This is delicious, right? Yep. Jason's almost finished his. Look, I'm right behind you. Yeah. Usually I'm like taking my time. I know. All right, so really quickly, where are they located again, and do you need reservations? You do need reservations, and the prime spots are already booked out for a few weeks, but there are a few weekday spots still available coming up soon. It's located at 449 West 14 Mile, just a couple of blocks away from downtown Clawson. Michelle, thank you so much. You should thank say Thank you. Oh, <laughs> dang. Done. Finished. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All, all right. right. If you love things foodie-related, all things foodie-related, in Metro Detroit, and you want restaurant recommendations and behind the scenes chats with fellow foodies, sign up for the Dine in the D newsletter sent to your inbox every other Thursday. To sign up, look for the newsletter tab at the top of clickondetroit.com. And while you're <laughs> online, Tati's eating. Tati's too. eating. <laughs> you can join our Dine in the D group on Facebook. That way you'll always be in the know for where the best food is in Detroit. And of course, you can follow Michelle Oliver, our resident foodie. She's the expert. Forget about Thrillist and Food Beast and all those no. others. No. Yeah, this Michelle. Is, yeah, Michelle. Oh, you got Michelle. You don't know all those others. That's right. Yeah. So what did you like better? The, uh, the poke bowl or the miso or the cheesecake? You didn't have the I didn't cheesecake. have the cheesecake. I liked the poke bowl more than the miso, but I did like the miso. You liked the cheesecake, which was... Shocking, surprising, because <laughs> I don't like cheesecake. It didn't taste like cheesecake. Yeah. It was very, very mild. Yes. And fluffy. There so, you go. Shozai, or Sozai, I should say. A uh, good place to check out in Clawson. And then finally, real reviews with Greg Russell. That's right. So what are you looking forward to watching this weekend? Everything. Everything. And you should too. Watch this. Hey, you know that popcorn right there looks like you put a straw in the middle and the butter went down to the butter. <laughs> <laughs> Will any new movies out this weekend have a chance to dethrone Doctor Strange from the top of the box office? No. Movie reviewer Greg Russell is here to tell us all about what we need to know and watch for. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Good to see you. I think the doctor's in a good position, so. <laughs> all right, well, this weekend can't top the huge Marvel release last weekend, but right. let's start with a new movie based on a Stephen King novel. This was a movie with... Drew Barrymore back in like 84 ish. Yes, it's like 30 some years ago. Firestarter. Right. All about this uh, young girl who has these special powers where she can, you know, almost become like the human torch. Poof! And all of a sudden, this government agency wants to capture her so they can use her for bad. Well, of course. Uh, we have a clip, or are we just looking at some video here? All right. Let's Hey, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Just breathe. 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 That's right. I feel something. What? Someone's here. No, Charlie! 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 No! <laughs> Okay, it doesn't look like it breaks any new ground over the original movie, but uh, how many reels for this one? Three-ish, you know, 
like that. It's also, it's in the theaters and also streaming. Okay. I have a funny feeling where people are going to stream it, you know, if they're going to watch it, then probably go out. So to, as a reminder to our viewers, uh, you have the, the you know, capability of going all the way up to five reels. Mm -hmm. You're saying three-ish, which means this could be like a 2.75. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, That's all like, we need to know. like that. <laughs> you know me well, you know. <laughs> Well, let's talk about a new series out on Netflix, Lincoln Lawyer. People may remember the movie by the same name. Is it the same premise? It is the same character. Um, what this one deals with is the new Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, he winds up inheriting a law firm because this guy left it to him when he passed away. But now they realize that the guy who passed away didn't do it under natural causes. So his deal is, let's find out the truth. Oh. But it, it's a really interesting series, 10 episodes, but they go by quick. Got to talk to all the cast, and here we go. A guy who had kind of been out of work for a little bit, yeah. but just because of uh, certain circumstances, he gets pulled back in, and that just really kind of starts this whole great story that makes people want to go, I got to see what's happening next. Yeah. I know. He's dealing with so many things. I I, <laughs> I, I was so... I, it was so much to, to to you know to play that to play that mm -hmm. you know vulnerability and all this. It just makes it more complex, you know. Then with the addiction and the wives and the daughter and the case and then the other case, <laughs> um, you know, it gets uh, yeah. It's just it's, it just keeps you <laughs> in the game, you know. Greg, Hi, we've been waiting for you, Greg. <laughs> Our whole life. Yeah. life. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much for the time. This was great. Watch this, folks, this series. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yesterday was my birthday. So this is like a oh, great birthday greeting. Birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to Greg. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Greg. Greg. Happy birthday, dear Greg. Greg. Watch Lincoln Lawyer. Happy birthday to Greg. Woo! <laughs> It's the best interview ever. I am done. The guy didn't smile a lot. Oh. He, he was the guy who you needed, you know, when I need a little extra strength. Who are you going to call? Angus. Oh. That's better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I was, I was probably just more nervous about falling off the motorbike. <laughs> Maybe that's why I wasn't smiling. But no, who doesn't want to ride around LA on a Harley Davidson, you know, uh, for work? So That's true. Like, Who yeah, does yeah, it, yeah. Greg? Don't you? <laughs> yeah, I want to. Yes. All right. We'll go together. In LA. Season okay, two. I'll, Season two. I'll, all right. I'll call you, Becky. Call all of you. Get <laughs> all right and do it. Okay. So when did you turn thirty-nine? What day? <laughs> Last Sunday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. And I went to see Engelbert Humperdinck. And I got to tell you, the crowd there loves our show. Oh, and okay. it was a fun time. <laughs> Excellent. All right. What did you think about the Lincoln Lawyer? I enjoyed it. I mean, because you do, you want to follow it to the end just to see what happens. And this guy is not imitating Matthew McConaughey. So that's another great point. All right. All right. All right. All right uh, finally, all right, all a new right. comedy out on Netflix called Senior Year starring Rebel Wilson. I watched it this morning. Okay. And I did think about you because it's now this is funny because this is about a young lady who at 17 or 18, uh, winds up in an accident, so she goes into a coma for like 20 years. So when she wakes up, she's still 20 years behind. And just with her way of trying to deal with the new world, because it's kind of like she's going, oh, well, when's my new uh, Vogue magazine coming in the mail? And they're like going, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's take a look at a clip. Didn't have the heart to change it. Madonna's now called Lady Gaga. No. no. Everybody else has got to go on and live their lives. And what, I'm supposed to just jump forward? I mean, I just found out there's eight more Fast and Furious movies. I want to go back to school, finish my senior year. They can't let an almost 40-year-old do high school. High school was just like yesterday for me. It will not be weird at all. Okay, so uh, how do they explain her accent in this movie? Is everybody else American? Oh, yeah, it was something, I'm trying to remember if she was adopted or something like that, oh, or okay. parents sent her over. There is an explanation, though. There is, yeah. Okay, there, so how many reels for seniors? This year? one I definitely gave a four, because as you see, it's, this is just something fun to sit down and watch. Like tonight, you just want to unwind. You'll sit down and watch this. Also has uh, U of D Jesuits' own Sam Richardson in the movie as well. All right, excellent. Uh, Greg, good to see you as always. Always a pleasure. All right, where can see, people see more of your uh, reviews, interviews, that sort of thing? Just go to movieshowplus.com and uh, sign up for our newsletter. Because if you do that, that also puts you in line for any contests that we have, any giveaways that we have. So just go there, movieshowplus.com.
All right, good to see you. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Boom. All right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with us for Live in the D in the green room. Give you a quick recap of our show. It was so much fun. It's going to be a great weekend. He's going golfing tomorrow. I hope oh, you win. Hopefully there's no storms. I don't care about winning now. I just don't know rain. But hopefully you have a nice weekend as well.